Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and have you ever been in the situation where you've just finished watching a film and seen the big twist or final reveal and thought, yeah, I, I, I guess that's okay, I mean it technically fills and ticks all of the boxes, yeah, I guess I'm happy. Well wait my friend, because let me tell you something, because sometimes films obviously have a lot of cut content and sometimes this cut content contains much better answers than the ones that we saw on screen. So let's take a look at them today, so I'm Jules, this is whatculture.com and these are eight deleted movie scenes with way better answers. Number eight, I Am Legend, alternative ending. First published in 1954, I Am Legend was written by Richard Matheson. It offered a different take on the post-apocalyptic genre by focusing on a single individual. Robert Neville is seemingly the only survivor of a pandemic that has mutated the world's population into ravenous monsters. When the property returned for a modern update in 2007 starring Will Smith, it was met with mostly positive reviews. High praise was given to the lead's performance and the sense of isolation that hung over the entire project. However, the third act was easily the biggest point of contention. The film comes to a head as the monsters Neville has been avoiding pile into his home. At this moment, the scientist discovers a cure within the captured mutant, gives it to fellow survivors Anna and Ethan, and finally blows himself up with a grenade in an ultimate sacrifice story. But this Hollywood eyes conclusion ended up missing the point of the entire story. In a deleted sequence that was eventually restored in a director's cut, it turns out that the monsters only wish to recover their mate. In this more emotional ending, Neville reaches the conclusion that humanity is the real monster, and as a result, a better sense of closure is delivered. Number 7. Deckard's Unicorn Dream A harbinger of 80s science fiction, the dystopian future of Blade Runner remains an outstanding contribution to the genre with discussions over its story and characters persisting to this very day. Rick Deckard's search for the escaped Nexus 6 replicants led by our boy Roy here was an atmospheric and immersive outing. Over the years, there has been much speculation over whether Deckard himself is a replicant, but the base 1982 release was rather vague on this question. With the difficulties it went through in productions and editing, Ridley Scott's original version was left half-finished in some respects. Some audiences expressed disappointment at this, especially with Harrison Ford's monotone narration that was brought in to explain the plot. This changed a decade later when the director's cut was finally released. Scott and the production team went back and redid many shots while adding in new ones. Of the numerous additions to the original film, no scene stood out more than the unicorn dream. It ties closely with the film's literal inspiration while seemingly confirming this fan theory. Blade Runner is an already incredibly deep and philosophical project with its themes, and the addition of the unicorn dream makes it even more thought-provoking, providing some much-needed detail to the greater and very great picture. Number 6. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 – The Dursleys Reflect Before Leaving For a full decade, the Harry Potter films captivated audiences the world over, setting the standard for adapting a longer book series into cinema, but divergences from the book had to be made, and some some stuck out more than others. One small detail that was mostly hand-waved away as the franchise reached its climax was that in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, the Dursleys leave their home at Privet Drive to avoid attracting the attention of Voldemort and his Death Eaters. A simple line from Uncle Vernon explains it, because it's not safe for us here anymore. But what many moviegoers didn't know was that an additional scene was shot that added one extra detail. From day one, the Dursleys treated Harry terribly, but in the franchise's final moment, his aunt created a greater sense of closure. She briefly talks to Harry before leaving, saying, You didn't just lose a mother in Godric's Hollow, I lost a sister. Harry also bids farewell to Dudley before fleeing to safety. This poignant moment speaks to the distance the two sides have come since Harry Potter was left on their doorstep and creates a sense of brief reconciliation between them. It was cut and simplified in the final release. And while it doesn't have too much to do with the rest of the film, the question of what happened to the hero's adoptive family feels much more conclusive here. Number 5. Terminator 2 Judgment Day – T-800 Chip Reset as far as action blockbusters go, Terminator 2 Judgment Day is pretty much unsurpassed. It was a powerful and progressive sequel that showed director James Cameron at the peak of his directorial skills. The theme of family runs strong throughout Terminator 2. As the T-800 protects John and Sarah Connor, he begins to learn the value of human life. Judging by the base theatrical cut, though, this is a bit of a head-scratcher. As a machine programmed solely for a single mission, how is it able to learn over time? Now, while Arnie does say, the more contact I 
have with humans the more I learn does go some way towards explaining this, some further detail was definitely missing here. Well, the answer actually lies in a deleted scene which takes place after the three escape the T-1000 at the mental hospital. With a reprieve from Robert Patrick's ruthless hunt, John and Sarah remove the Skynet chip from the machine's skull, resetting it from its read-only state. This allows the T-800's learning computer to take on a greater amount of knowledge. In addition to providing a better explanation, this scene also deepens the rift between mother and son. Sarah still doesn't fully trust the cyborg, while John, showing some authority, stresses that they need the T-800 to survive. While this moment was deemed unnecessary by the production team, it still offers a lot of great detail. Number 4. Independence Day – Levinson took over the alien aircraft Released in 1996, Independence Day was a monster success commercially. The late 90s blockbuster was typified with its tale of human fighters against alien invaders. Directed by Roman Emmerich, it kicked off his wave of success in the disaster genre that continued on to the 2000s. But that doesn't mean that there's not a huge gap or two within this flick. In the film's climax, Hiller teams up with David Levinson, played by Ian Malcolm, to commandeer an alien spacecraft for the final battle. But there's just one problem with this build-up. How do they know how to fly it? Well, one sequence was cut from the final version that provided the answer. Released for the film's 20th anniversary, the scene shows Jeff Goldblum's character visiting a crashed alien craft and examining its controls. On top of this, the scientist also pieces together a key virus that stops the alien mothership in its final moments. With the help of fellow researchers, it's an important piece of the wider story. As wildly over the top as Independence Day is, this missing moment would have helped fix some of its lingering plot holes. It was likely cut for time in the lead-up to the final battle, but still, it probably should have stayed in. Number 3. Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice – Lex Luthor Speaks with Kryptonians from one spectrum of blockbusters to the other now, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice is considered uh, one of the weaker entries in the DC Extended Universe. In its desperate bid to catch up with its biggest competitor, Batman vs Superman ended up feeling like, well, a bit of a sloppy mess for the most part. Arguably, the chief complaint was how it tried to cram five different stories into just one film, severely damaging any build-up to the greater franchise. One of the many plot threads involved Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor creating Doomsday by combining his DNA DNA with the deceased General Zod. After bumbling its way through too many story components to count, Batman vs Superman jumped straight into the death of Superman plotline with no establishing material. This made no sense in hindsight. Why would a megalomaniac who hates Kryptonians create one of his own? Well, one scene, known as Communion to the producers, arrived shortly after the film's release. It intended to foreshadow future events in the series by showing the villain communicating with Darkseid via the Kryptonian ship computer. Now, this addition doesn't suddenly make Batman vs Superman a far superior film, but it did give Lex a shred of motivation. By potentially summoning Darkseid to Earth in a future release, his character would have a greater part to play. Number 2. Die Hard – Synchronized Terrorist Watches Now we come to one of the finest action blockbusters ever produced. Die Hard, which dropped in 1988 to massive audience recognition. For the most part, it's a near-perfectly paced and intense thrill ride as John McClane takes on a band of crooks with whatever resources he can find. One set of cut footage, though, raises a few eyebrows. The deleted shots can be broken down into three sections, and the first is when Hans Gruber and his thieves arrive in a van. They synchronize their watches before heading up in the lift. This shows their intensely effective planning, and further on when John McClane kills the first thief, he debates whether or not to take the villain's watch. Later in the film, McLean and Gruber come face to face for the first time. The cop notices the mastermind's watch and realizes that he is one of the terrorists. In the final film, though, viewers mainly chalk it up to John's police intuition in recognizing a criminal. Now, these shots had to be cut as there was no ambulance shown in the first shot of Gruber and his men, which they planned to use as an escape vehicle. Die Hard's brand of action remained a masterclass, but this little addition adds an extra dynamic to both the protagonist and the enemies he faces. And number one, get Get out. Rose gets hypnotized. And finally, we have Get Out, Jordan Peele's breakout mashup of horror and thriller elements. What starts out as a seemingly normal tale of Chris heading to meet his white girlfriend's family quickly takes a turn for the worst. It turns out that Rose's family are a pack of psychopathic hypnotists who want to steal black people's bodies. Initially, it's confirmed that Rose's mother is the mastermind behind this psychosis and the other family members are all in on the scheme. But adding a little more ambiguity to the proceedings, one moment that was removed from Get Out was a 
conversation between Chris and his then-girlfriend. Rose says in a cut dialogue scene, I had the same thing. She hypnotized me when I was in school for stage fright and I had the craziest nightmares, but I just remember thinking, it worked. Now this scene here changes Rose's arc dramatically. In the original theatrical cut, she is a down-and-out monster, she's utterly horrendous, but this adds a tiny wrinkle saying that she too is a victim of her mother's actions. Now do not get me wrong, it does not remove the guilt from her entirely, but it does change her character somewhat. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight deleted movie scenes with way better answers. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can go to at L-A-L-D Tweet to stay up to date for all of my live and let's die stuff, all my board game stuff and live streams that I'm doing there. It'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope that you are treating yourself well, both mentally and physically, because you deserve love, my friend. Yes, you do. And do not let anyone or anything else tell you otherwise. Otherwise, you're a massive ledge. Now go out there and absolutely smash it today. As always, I've been Jules. You've been awesome. And never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.